Infinity, symbol, infinity is a concept describing something without any bound, or something larger than any natural number. Philosophers have speculated about the nature of the infinite, for example Zeno of Elia, who proposed many paradoxes involving infinity, and Eudarxus of Cnidus, who used the idea of infinitely small quantities in his method of exhaustion. This idea is also at the basis of infinitesimal calculus. At the end of 19th century, Georg Cantor introduced and studied infinite sets and infinite numbers, which are now an essential part of the foundation of mathematics. For example, in modern mathematics, a line is viewed as the set of all its points, and their infinite number the cardinality of the line is larger than the number of integers. Thus the mathematical concept of infinity refines and extends the old philosophical concept. It is used everywhere in mathematics, even in areas, such as combinatorics and number theory that may seem to have nothing to do with it. For example, Wiles's proof of Fermat's last theorem uses the existence of very large infinite sets. The concept of infinity is also used in physics and the other sciences. History Ancient cultures had various ideas about the nature of infinity. The ancient Indians and Greeks did not define infinity in precise formalism as does modern mathematics, and instead approached infinity as a philosophical concept. Early Greek The earliest recorded idea of infinity comes from Anaximander, a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher who lived in Miletus. He used the word apiron which means infinite or limitless. However, the earliest attestable accounts of mathematical infinity come from Zeno of Elia born c. 490 BCE, a pre-Socratic Greek philosopher of southern Italy and member of the Eleatic school founded by Parmenides. Aristotle called him the inventor of the dialectic. He is best known for his paradoxes, described by Bertrand Russell as immeasurably subtle and profound. In accordance with the traditional view of Aristotle, the Hellenistic Greeks generally preferred to distinguish the potential infinity from the actual infinity, for example, instead of saying that there are an infinity of primes, Euclid prefers instead to say that there are more prime numbers than contained in any given collection of prime numbers. Early Indian The Jain mathematical text Surya Prajnapti c. 4th, 3rd century BCE classifies all numbers into three sets, innumerable, innumerable, and infinite. Each of these was further subdivided into three orders innumerable, lowest, intermediate, and highest innumerable, nearly innumerable, truly innumerable, and innumerably innumerable infinite, nearly infinite, truly infinite, infinitely infinite in this work, two basic types of infinite numbers are distinguished. On both physical and ontological grounds, a distinction was made between asamkhyata, countless, innumerable, and ananta, endless, unlimited between rigidly bounded and loosely bounded infinities. 17th century European mathematicians started using infinite numbers and expressions in a systematic fashion in the 17th century. 
In 1655 John Wallace first used the notation infinity for such a number in his De sectionibus conicis and exploited it in area calculations by dividing the region into infinitesimal strips of width on the order of 1 infinity but in Arithmetica Infinitorum also, he indicates infinite series, infinite products and infinite continued fractions by writing down a few terms or factors and then appending and see, for example, 1, 6, 12, 18, 24, and c. In 1699 Isaac Newton wrote about equations with an infinite number of terms in his work De Analyse per A Equationis Numero Terminorum Infinitas. Topic: Mathematics. Hermann Weyl opened a mathematico-philosophic address given in 1930 with "Mathematics is the science of the infinite." Topic: Infinity symbol. The infinity symbol, infinity, display style, infty, sometimes called the Lemnus gate, is a mathematical symbol representing the concept of infinity. The symbol is encoded in Unicode at U plus 221 E infinity infinity HTML and hash 8734 an infin winking face, and in latex as infty. It was introduced in 1655 by John Wallace, and, since its introduction, has also been used outside mathematics in modern mysticism and literary symbology. Calculus <coughs> 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 Leibniz, one of the co-inventors of infinitesimal calculus, speculated widely about infinite numbers and their use in mathematics. To Leibniz, both infinitesimals and infinite quantities were ideal entities, not of the same nature as appreciable quantities, but enjoying the same properties in accordance with the law of continuity. Topic: Real analysis. In real analysis, the symbol infinity display style infty called infinity is used to denote an unbounded limit. The notation x infinity display style x right arrow inf t means that x grows without bound and x minus infinity display style x to inf t means that x decreases without bound if f t 0 for every t then a b F T D T equals infinity display style int underscore a carrot b f t d t equals inf t means that f t does not bound a finite area from a display style a to B display style B minus infinity infinity F T D T equals infinity Display style int underscore inf t carrot inf t f t d t equals inf t means that the area under f t is infinite minus infinity infinity f t 
d t equals a display style int underscore inf t caret inf t f t d t equals a means that the total area under f t is finite and equals a display style a infinity is also used to describe infinite series i equals 0 infinity f i equals a display style sum underscore i equals 0 caret inf t f i equals a means that the sum of the infinite series converges to some real value a display style a i equals 0 infinity f i equals infinity display style sum underscore i equals 0 caret inf t f i equals inf t means that the sum of the infinite series diverges in the specific sense that the partial sums grow without bound infinity can be used not only to define a limit but as a value in the extended real number system points labeled plus infinity display style plus inf t and minus infinity display style inf t can be added to the topological space of the real numbers producing the two point compactification of the real numbers adding algebraic properties to this gives us the extended real numbers we can also treat plus infinity display style plus inf t and minus infinity display style inf t as the same leading to the one point compactification of the real numbers which is the real projective line Projective geometry also refers to a line at infinity in plane geometry, a plane at infinity in three-dimensional space, and a hyperplane at infinity for general dimensions, each consisting of points at infinity. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Complex analysis. In complex analysis, the symbol infinity display style inf t called infinity denotes an unsigned infinite limit x infinity display style x right arrow inf t means that the magnitude x display style x of x grows beyond any assigned value a point labeled infinity display style inf t can be added to the complex plane as a topological space giving the one point compactification of the complex plane when this is done the resulting space is a one dimensional complex manifold or riemann surface called the extended complex plane or the riemann sphere arithmetic operations similar to those given above for the extended real numbers can also be defined though there is no distinction in the signs therefore one exception is that infinity cannot be added to itself on the other hand, this kind of infinity enables division by zero, namely z zero equals infinity. Display style z zero equals inf t for any non-zero complex number z. 
In this context it is often useful to consider meromorphic functions as maps into the Riemann sphere taking the value of infinity inf_t at the poles. The domain of a complex valued function may be extended to include the point at infinity as well. One important example of such functions is the group of Mobius transformations. Topic: <laughs> Non-standard analysis. The original formulation of infinitesimal calculus by Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz used infinitesimal quantities. In the 20th century, it was shown that this treatment could be put on a rigorous footing through various logical systems, including smooth infinitesimal analysis and non-standard analysis. In the latter, infinitesimals are invertible, and their inverses are infinite numbers. The infinities in this sense are part of a hyperreal field, there is no equivalence between them as with the Cantorian transfinites. For example, if h is an infinite number, then h plus h equals 2h and h plus 1 are distinct infinite numbers. This approach to nonstandard calculus is fully developed in Keisler Set theory equals a different form of infinity are the ordinal and cardinal infinities of set theory. Georg Cantor developed a system of transfinite numbers, in which the first transfinite cardinal is Aleph null zero, the cardinality of the set of natural numbers. This modern mathematical conception of the quantitative infinite developed in the late 19th century from work by Cantor, Gottlob Frege, Richard Dedekind and others, using the idea of collections, or sets. Dedekind's approach was essentially to adopt the idea of one-to-one -one correspondence as a standard for comparing the size of sets, and to reject the view of Galileo which derived from Euclid that the whole cannot be the same size as the part, however, see Galileo's paradox where he concludes that positive integers which are squares and all positive integers are the same size. An infinite set can simply be defined as one having the same size as at least one of its proper parts, this notion of infinity is called Dedekind infinite. The diagram gives an example, viewing lines as infinite sets of points, the left half of the lower blue line can be mapped in a one-to-one -one manner green correspondences to the higher blue line, and, in turn, to the whole lower blue line red correspondences, therefore the whole lower blue line and its left half have the same cardinality, i.e. size. Cantor defined two kinds of infinite numbers, ordinal numbers and cardinal numbers. Ordinal numbers may be identified with well-ordered sets, or counting carried on to any stopping point, including points after an infinite number have already been counted. Generalizing finite and the ordinary infinite sequences which are maps from the positive integers leads to mappings from ordinal numbers, and transfinite sequences. Cardinal numbers define the size of sets, meaning how many members they contain, and can be standardized by choosing the first ordinal number of a certain size to represent the cardinal number of that size. The smallest ordinal infinity is that of the positive integers, and any set which has the cardinality of the integers is countably infinite. If a set is too large to be put in one-to-one -one correspondence with the positive integers, it is called uncountable. Cantor's views prevailed and modern mathematics accepts actual infinity. Certain extended number systems, such as the hyperreal numbers, incorporate the ordinary finite numbers and infinite numbers of different sizes. 
equals topic cardinality of the continuum equals one of Cantor's most important results was that the cardinality of the continuum C display style math BF C is greater than that of the natural numbers 0 display style Aleph underscore 0 that is, there are more real numbers R than natural numbers N namely, Cantor showed that C equals 2 0 greater than 0 display style math BF C equals 2 carat Aleph underscore 0 greater than Aleph underscore 0 See Cantor's diagonal argument or Cantor's first uncountability proof. The continuum hypothesis states that there is no cardinal number between the cardinality of the reals and the cardinality of the natural numbers, that is, C equals 1 equals 1. Display style math bf c equals aleph underscore one equals beth underscore one c beth one. This hypothesis can neither be proved nor disproved within the widely accepted Zermelo-Frankel set theory. Even assuming the axiom of choice, cardinal arithmetic can be used to show not only that the number of points in a real number line is equal to the number of points in any segment of that line, but that this is equal to the number of points on a plane and, indeed, in any finite dimensional space. The first of these results is apparent by considering, for instance, the tangent function, which provides a one-to-one -one correspondence between the interval minus pi, two, pi, two, and r. See also Hilbert's paradox of the Grand Hotel. The second result was proved by Cantor in 1878, but only became intuitively apparent in 1890, when Giuseppe Pino introduced the space-filling curves, curved lines that twist and turn enough to fill the whole of any square, or cube, or hypercube, or finite-dimensional space. These curves can be used to define a one-to-one -one correspondence between the points on one side of a square and the points in the square. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geometry and topology. Infinite dimensional spaces are widely used in geometry and topology, particularly as classifying spaces, such as Eilenberg minus Maclean spaces. Common examples are the infinite dimensional complex projective space K Z, two, and the infinite dimensional real projective space K Z, two, Z, one. Topic: Fractals. The structure of a fractal object is reiterated in its magnifications. Fractals can be magnified indefinitely without losing their structure and becoming smooth. They have infinite perimeters, some with infinite and others with finite surface areas. One such fractal curve with an infinite perimeter and finite surface area is the Cox snowflake. Topic: Mathematics without infinity. Leopold Kronecker was skeptical of the notion of infinity and how his fellow mathematicians were using it in the 1870s and 1880s. This skepticism was developed in the philosophy of mathematics called finitism, an extreme form of mathematical philosophy in the general philosophical and mathematical schools of constructivism and intuitionism. Topic: 
Topic: Physics. In physics, approximations of real numbers are used for continuous measurements and natural numbers are used for discrete measurements i.e. counting. It is therefore assumed by physicists that no measurable quantity could have an infinite value, for instance by taking an infinite value in an extended real number system, or by requiring the counting of an infinite number of events. It is, for example, presumed impossible for any type of body to have infinite mass or infinite energy. Concepts of infinite things such as an infinite plane wave exist, but there are no experimental means to generate them. <laughs> Theoretical applications of physical infinity The practice of refusing infinite values for measurable quantities does not come from a priori or ideological motivations, but rather from more methodological and pragmatic motivations. One of the needs of any physical and scientific theory is to give usable formulas that correspond to or at least approximate reality. As an example, if any object of infinite gravitational mass were to exist, any usage of the formula to calculate the gravitational force would lead to an infinite result, which would be of no benefit since the result would be always the same regardless of the position and the mass of the other object. The formula would be useful neither to compute the force between two objects of finite mass nor to compute their motions. If an infinite mass object were to exist, any object of finite mass would be attracted with infinite force and hence acceleration by the infinite mass object, which is not what we can observe in reality. Sometimes infinite result of a physical quantity may mean that the theory being used to compute the result may be approaching the point where it fails. This may help to indicate the limitations of a theory. This point of view does not mean that infinity cannot be used in physics. For convenience's sake, calculations, equations, theories, and approximations often use infinite series, unbounded functions, etc., and may involve infinite quantities. Physicists, however, require that the end result be physically meaningful. In quantum field theory infinities arise which need to be interpreted in such a way as to lead to a physically meaningful result, a process called renormalization. However, there are some theoretical circumstances where the end result is infinity. One example is the singularity in the description of black holes. Some solutions of the equations of the general theory of relativity allow for finite mass distributions of zero size, and thus infinite density. This is an example of what is called a mathematical singularity, or a point where a physical theory breaks down. This does not necessarily mean that physical infinities exist, it may mean simply that the theory is incapable of describing the situation properly. Two other examples occur in inverse square force laws of the gravitational force equation of Newtonian gravity and Coulomb's law of electrostatics. At r equals zero these equations evaluate to infinities. Topic. Cosmology The first published proposal that the universe is infinite came from Thomas Diggers in 1576. Eight years later, in 1584, the Italian philosopher and astronomer Giordano Bruno proposed an unbounded universe in On the Infinite Universe and Worlds. Innumerable suns exist, innumerable earths revolve around these suns in a manner similar to the way the seven planets revolve around our sun. Living beings inhabit these worlds. Cosmologists have long sought to discover whether infinity exists in our physical universe, are there an infinite number of stars? 
Does the universe have infinite volume? Does space go on forever? This is an open question of cosmology. The question of being infinite is logically separate from the question of having boundaries. The two-dimensional surface of the Earth, for example, is finite, yet has no edge. By traveling in a straight line with respect to the Earth's curvature one will eventually return to the exact spot one started from. The universe, at least in principle, might have a similar topology. If so, one might eventually return to one's starting point after traveling in a straight line through the universe for long enough. The curvature of the universe can be measured through multiple moments in the spectrum of the cosmic background radiation. As to date, analysis of the radiation patterns recorded by the WMAP spacecraft hints that the universe has a flat topology. This would be consistent with an infinite physical universe, however, the universe could be finite, even if its curvature is flat. An easy way to understand this is to consider two-dimensional examples, such as video games where items that leave one edge of the screen reappear on the other. The topology of such games is toroidal and the geometry is flat. Many possible bounded, flat possibilities also exist for three dimensional space. The concept of infinity also extends to the multiverse hypothesis, which, when explained by astrophysicists such as Michio Kaku, posits that there are an infinite number and variety of universes. <laughs> Logic In logic an infinite regress argument is a distinctively philosophical kind of argument purporting to show that a thesis is defective because it generates an infinite series when either form A no such series exists or form B were it to exist, the thesis would lack the role e of justification that it is supposed to play. Topic. Computing The IEEE floating point standard IEEE specifies the positive and negative infinity values and also indefinite values. These are defined as the result of arithmetic overflow, division by zero, and other exceptional operations. Some programming languages, such as Java and J, allow the programmer an explicit access to the positive and negative infinity values as language constants. These can be used as greatest and least elements, as they compare, respectively, greater than or less than all other values. They have uses as sentinel values in algorithms involving sorting, searching, or windowing, in languages that do not have greatest and least elements, but do allow overloading of relational operators. It is possible for a programmer to create the greatest and least elements. In languages that do not provide explicit access to such values from the initial state of the program, but do implement the floating point data type, the infinity values may still be accessible and usable as the result of certain operations. Topic arts, games, and cognitive sciences Perspective artwork utilizes the concept of vanishing points, roughly corresponding to mathematical points at infinity, located at an infinite distance from the observer. This allows artists to create paintings that realistically render space, distances, and forms. Artist MC Escher is specifically known for employing the concept of infinity in his work in this and other ways. Variations of chess played on an unbounded board are called infinite chess. Cognitive scientist George Lakoff considers the concept of infinity in mathematics and the sciences as a metaphor. 
This perspective is based on the basic metaphor of infinity BMI, defined as the ever-increasing sequence, greater than, the symbol is often used romantically to represent eternal love. Several types of jewelry are fashioned into the infinity shape for this purpose. Topic. See also Infinity portal 0 0.999 Aleph number Exponentiation Indeterminate form Infinite monkey theorem Infinite set Infinitesimal Paradoxes of infinity Supertask Surreal number equals equals notes <laughs> <laughs>